um, thank you for clicking on this video. Um, my name's Helen. I live in Plymouth in Stonehouse and you might recognise some projects I've worked on, uh, community gardening projects, uh, St Matthias Community Garden Project and the Adelaide Street Angels Gardening Group. Um, and at this moment in time, we're having to spend a lot of time indoors. I know I am. I'm spending most of my time indoors at the moment. And I expect a lot of you are as well, or I hope so, as much as you can. And uh, it's time to think of things that we can do together at home to learn and to keep our minds occupied and a really exciting thing you can do is learn to grow. Um, I am going to start this video with very, very basics and talk you through if at any point you want to pause the video and um, work through that section then do pause the video and then play it when you're ready to move on to the next bit. The thing with gardening is that a lot of people do it a lot of different ways and there is no right or wrong way and you will develop your own style and this means that everyone is always a student always learning and also able to teach other people things that they know and it's really nice to share what your tricks and tips are with other people um, and to know that it's a constant learning process. So part of being a, a gardener, and this is how I started, is knowing nothing, nothing at all. So you don't know anything and that's how most things start. So we have to get over our worry of not doing it right because the only way we're going to learn is by starting and by making lots and lots of mistakes so mistakes are a really good positive thing because mistakes mean you're learning so that's good so don't be too worried if your gardening plans don't go entirely how you want it just means that you're learning for the next time when you garden again. Um, I'm going to go through a few things that I already do um, to save money and to recycle. Um, gardening, you don't need much money uh, to do it. And we're just going to start with some tips and tricks that I know. Um, and work together to see what we can create. And I would really, really like to see what people are producing, getting up to, using their ideas. Um, if you're younger and watching this, you definitely need to have an adult at hand to help you. Um, do what you can and we may be using scissors and we may be using plastic which has sharp edges so it's very useful to have an adult so that could be anyone it would be really good if you tried to help your adult with the mess if you can and we shall begin um, I have got my trusty lunch box, which I keep all my seeds in. One really good tip is to grow what you will eat. Now, as a um, first time gardener, you may be really tempted to go all out and grow every single vegetable 
and I applaud your um, eagerness but what I would say is think about the things that you eat so I'm going to show you some vegetables and herbs because we like herbs and also talk through anything that comes to mind <laughs> when I'm doing this so I haven't scripted anything as you can probably see so I'm gonna open this up now the other thing to remember is the reason why people have boxes and boxes of seeds is because you're always given too many in the packet and so you end up keeping lots um, and swapping them with other gardeners which is cool you go to seed swap you know get the seeds you want you don't have to spend any more money that's what I do um, and you meet lots of other gardeners which is cool uh, the gardeners here in Plymouth are awesome and always ready to give tips out to anyone who would like them so let's show you some seeds okay so these are actually quite big seeds monge 2 monge 2 is that bean that really thin <laughs> delicious bean uh, another thing to keep in mind is to sellotape or stick your packages together if you can otherwise when you take them out your seeds will jump all over you plants make seeds in lots of different ways some plants the seeds are inside like you'd have with a tomato or pepper and some seeds like shoot up from the flower of the plant like you would have with rocket and something like that so all seeds are sort of collected in different ways depending on how the plant produces the seeds um, and once you have the plant you can you can um, save the seeds and plant them next year and you don't ha even have to go to the seed swap then because you have the seeds from your plant um, so this is the beginning the beginning of the plant and it usually dry um, you see a lot of videos where people are um, cutting up peppers and putting them straight in a pot I wouldn't recommend that because um, little plants need room to grow because they're really delicate and their roots are really delicate and at some point when your plant gets bigger you'll have to take the seeds apart the little plants apart and because they're really delicate the roots will be intertwined with each other because they're so close um, and you'll have to pull them apart and the roots might break so when you start a seed you usually leave as a good rule of thumb i would leave about two centimeters around the plant so that it has room to grow main things to remember about little seeds and plants in general is that they need sunlight and they need air and they need water just like humans do um, and a really good place to find this this these conditions are on your windowsill so I have two windowsills in my bedroom both of them get a lot of light um, and I have one windowsill I spotted today in the kitchen um, that doesn't get too much light some seeds like full light to germinate new word germinate which means that it starts to grow um, and some plants like a cooler, they don't need full light, they like a cooler germinating temperature. So an example of that, of common, common one, are uh, lettuce and carrots, like a cooler climate. Um, tomatoes like a hot climate, they like the hot windowsill environment. Um, and herbs tend to like the windowsill a lot. Um, and they're quite easy so think about what you eat I'll tell you what I am looking at 
you have to think about how many people are going to be eating this as well and how much space you have um, and if you have a garden and you can move the hardier plants that need to be outside outside there's a lot of plants that you can plant inside um, there's a lot of plants that you can and veg and herbs and all sorts that you can put in pots if you have a big pot um, but we're going to look at that later that's more later on what we're going to look at now is the seeds and i'm going to try my best to keep this simple okay so last year <laughs> this is not simple last year i collected my um sweet pea seeds and i don't know why but i i collected them in this bottle cap and <laughs> They sort of started to germinate when I'd started picking them so that you can kind of see, no you can't, yes you can, can you see that? That's a sweet pea seed and you see that little bit poking out, that's it starting to germinate, like breaking out of the shell. Um, and I'm hoping that that won't have any negative effect on the seed. It's in a really cool bottle cap, I think that's why did that. I also saved my short sunflowers seeds and my tall sunflower seeds from the sunflower. That was an exciting experience. Right, let's move on. <clears throat> okay, so some really easy, very common um, things to grow, which I'll go through with you, I think. We won't go through that. We'll go for a mixed salad because, oh, it's backwards. Um, my mum sent me this one uh, and it just says mixed salad. It has no information, so I'm going to have to look it up, which is really good for learning. If you're watching this, you have access to the internet and you must look up, if you can, you should look up bits and bobs that you don't, that I'm not making any sense on because that will help you learn. Right, so we're going for mixed salad. I've got some herbs here. Some of mine might not be in date, um, but that doesn't matter. You can just try it anyway. Some of them aren't named. <laughs> parsley. I've got quite a bit of parsley chives. That's nice. That can go outside. Coriander. I don't really use coriander. Basil, got some basil already, I think so. And mint, I do like mint. Mint is just something that smells nice, really. More than eating it. A lot of these you can use in loads of different ways as well, especially with herbs. Um, if you've got any thyme, um, as in T H Y M E, um, boiling it up in hot water and having some honey is really nice if you're feeling a bit unwell um it's got natural natural something in it which helps with fighting colds and things like that so yes yeah, parsley so we have chives mint parsley i've already got thyme growing basil right so i should be showing you what these look like i suppose so basil it looks like this. It's a big green leaf. Uh, basil's really nice in pasta. Can add lots of flavour. Um, I usually put it in Italian dishes. This is parsley, and parsley is just great with lots of things. Fish, if you like fish. Um, mint, as I said. Chives. This is one of them hardy hardy herbs that you can put outside and it makes lots of nice flowers for the bees because you need bees to pollinate to pollinate the uh the plants that's what you need you need the bees something that i will definitely eat wild rocket or normal rocket wild not wild this is a hardy one that can go outside eventually or you can plant it straight outside if you want to be, take take a chance I have no idea what a gyp... No. 
lettuce. So I've got some more lettuce. I might experiment with a few different types of lettuce. I've got your normal rocket. Now, courgette, you need a lot, you need about, you need a, a lot of space for a courgette, right? So when I say a lot, I mean, <laughs> you know, enough for it to grow. It needs the space to grow. But if you can have courgette, have it because it's tasty, it's yummy, it grows lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. So that will keep you going. Beetroot is something I really want to grow this year because I haven't before and I feel like it's a beginner's staple beetroot. Plus, it's really tasty. I like it on salads, which hopefully I'm going to grow. Got some fennel, which is a tasty, tasty option. Yep, I'm going to do that. Got onions, which is a maybe. Got cucumbers, which I'm definitely doing. Um, this is great. You need a lot of soil again, but you can grow it in your windowsill. If you mix, it grows upwards or, or it trails, but it, it likes to grow upwards. So you'd make like a a thing for it to grow up and that can be anything. So Swiss chard, easy. You can cook it. I think you can have, you, you can eat it raw, cook it. Like with most of these things, to be honest. Curly kale last year was amazing. Um, it's, I think it's even going now through the winter. It went through the whole winter growing. Um, there's vegetables that are summer and veg vegetables that are winter. But I mean, oh yeah, no, it does say harvest to December. I mean, it's great. It will last you for ages. It will come up in August, so a little bit later in the year. So some vegetables will come up early, some later. I highly recommend kale. It's delicious with really a tiny amount of oil on it in the oven. Out, um, two minutes, quick, done. Delicious on top of anything um, or on its own, like crisps. And it's healthy. Wow. Um, going to be difficult to get these up into my room because I'm really high up so I might end up having to take a lot of things outside. Um, I have a very shady garden but there are a few spots of sun so we'll see what we can do. Sweet! It's healthy. You eat it with your Sunday meal. Don't miss out. <laughs> Radish is the easiest vegetable that I've ever grown and it grows really quickly. So what, what I'll talk to you about maybe is um, succession planting, which is when you plant a few seeds and you know when they're going to come up and then you don't just want that to be your only harvest. So you would plant in weeks. So one week you have lots of radishes come up and you eat them. And then because you planted a week later, you have more radishes and then so that's kind of a good way to have lots of them. These just, they will grow under some very difficult conditions. Radishes and they're fiery, tasty salads. Just great radishes. Oregano. Um, oregano Greek. Oregano, did I possibly have oregano as well? Because herbs, you can grow them on your windowsill um, and they love it there and you don't need bees to pollinate them. Keep your herbs on your windowsill. Uh, spring onions. Lavender, I might try and plant a bit of lavender somewhere. Fennel again. Let's try to do two different types of fennel. Garden cress. Have you got some of this lying about? This would be <laughs> the easiest thing that you will grow. Um, very, very easy. Um, three to five days germination. So it's it's a quick turnaround plant. 
this next to radishes, you're fine. You're not going to make any mistakes, probably. But if you do, that's great because you're learning. Parsley. Already got parsley. So this is a... There's different types of herbs as well. So this is like curled aromatic. I only really need one type, so I'll just pick out the two. This is what your radishes will look like. Yes, I'm a massive... Since I've started growing radishes, I've become a big fan. Before, take it or leave it, to be honest. But when you grow your, your own stuff, it tastes so much better um, than in the supermarkets. Uh, so you have a new... Uh, taste sensation carrots rainbow carrots so I tried these last year they came out really small and kind of like you know but tasted good marigolds I can't um, highly recommend these enough this will come in handy in and around your vegetables because your vegetables will be attracted Slugs will be attracted to your vegetables. Your vegetables won't be attracted to slugs. But they like these even more. So if you plant these around your veg, because they will go to your veg anyway, it's not going to bring more. It will just take them away. That's what I found. It They go to the, the marigold and eat it. So it's kind of a, like a lemming. It's putting itself out there to help others which is what we should all be doing right now. Be a marigold. <clears throat> Patty pan. Um, I actually brought these this year because I'm a little bit curious. I have I did buy one once a long time ago, and I've always been really curious. They're quite small. They're like, like that, and they're like little squashes or, or something like that. Oh, round courgette. <laughs> so they're round courgettes. So they're like, like courgettes, but yellow and round. Um, I would stick to normal courgettes if you're going to. Tomtuto or tomato. And some sweet corn. Oh, God. Okay, so lots to plant. Lots to do. And plenty of time to think about it. Now, we are going from there. Oh, do you know what? As well, actually, I might throw some lunch to. <laughs> oh, God. Right, learn from my mistakes. Yeah, this is the, this needs to be put in a new bag. Monge two. Um, yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> so it's all good because what I've learned there is that I need to put that in a new bag. But when I do that, to remember to put on the information that is on the back. So how deep it should be planted. Oh, this is good because it says to do it straight outside. One, the thick plants that grow up will need structure. So, so it gives you all the directions on the back. It's very simple. And if not, you can always um, Google the information. Because everything is also online. The other thing you can do is you can you can use seeds that you have in your vegetables now. So um, a few things that you could grow uh, would be, and that you would probably have in your, your fridge and things like that, would be tomatoes and peppers and things like that. Um, on these videos online, they just plant them into the ground and they grow, um, which you could try, or you can try and take the seeds and kind of save them seed saving um, where you take off like anything around the seed you clean it 
and then you plant that. Um, so yeah, peppers, tomatoes. What else? What else could you use? Anything else? Comment down below for everyone to read because that'd be really useful. Like really common things in your fridge: strawberries, your classic strawberries. That will take you a lot of time if you're looking for something to pass the time taking the seeds off the strawberries. Um, mm, I really want to grow strawberries this year, but I just don't see any in my seed box. It's a bit late for strawberries, so everything I have different times. So we'll go through that. Okay. Hello. Right, so we had a big talk about seeds and the sort of seeds you might like to use. Now at this time you are staying inside, which is great, um, so you might not have at hand, I should have picked this up, but I'll show you, uh, these seed starter trays, and usually small and do the job really well. I've never brought any. Um, those are from my mum and dad. And you might not have these available to you right now. So what we're going to do is what, how I started, which is using my recycling. And you probably have some recycling around at the moment. Before you go into the recycling, because I know you're really excited to um, ask an adult to do it for you, because you might put your hand in and there might be sharp bits and you don't want to hurt yourself. Um, so, here's an example of some of the things I found which I'm going to use. We have milk bottles. Plastic is a good thing to look for. It will keep all the moisture in and you can keep it sturdy. I've got a few different milks from not recycling. I drink a lot of coffee as well. Um, we have these smaller trays. Some of them are really very thin, but they're also really useful because your pots, you're going to have to make holes in the bottom of them so that the water can drain out because your plants need to not be swimming in water so they don't go what be the correct word so they don't die so you need that water to go out you need some flow you need, your seed needs flow so where's the water going to go on your windowsill it's going to go in here i'm going to stick that on the sill this will catch the water we'll go through some other bits related to that another lid which i will use to catch it water possibly for planting possibly for catching water uh takeaway thing this is a lot harder this plastic so making holes would be more difficult so you've got to think about what you can use to make holes in these things and for the cress because as far as i know that's going to be tray tray very very easy i'm going to use a tray this I found in recycling. And I just thought, like, I folded it up and it was ready to go out. But I'll take it out and I just used a cup to re recreate the base. And this will be really easy to make holes in. Um, so, what you will need is a pair of scissors and somewhere that you can sit and cut. Now, you need, for something like this, with seeds, you're going to need, let's use a seed tray as like an example. That's about how much soil seed trays allow for. It isn't a huge amount, it depends on the seed, so we'll go for a slightly bigger one to be on the safe side. Um, so about, do you say one Two, two inches or two and a half inches. Doesn't need to be perfect. Get your milk bottle. Cutting the side, this is difficult. Ask an adult. If you are an adult, 
you know, be a little bit careful anyway. Now, me personally, I've got my edges. I like to make it look a bit prettier by going around and getting rid of those like slightly not even edges. All of this plastic that you're cutting off can be recycled again. Um, as far as I know the bins and recycling are going as normal. So it pains me to see it not even. The only problem with what I'm doing is, is that you can start to cut it down and down and down and down and then so stop at some point. There we go. It's uh, just a little bit, a little bit higher. For some seeds, this is going to be one, two at push. But like a tomato seed or something, because they grow and then you need to repot them, but they still need that time to grow. So for now, keep this. Um, because you can turn this into like kind of cool um, but for now we're going to make a, a pile of things that are ready to go right, I'm going to probably fast forward this bit do not forget to wash all of this before you start be another thing you can get your grown up to do. Now we have everything that we want. We have our scissors. Depending on the plastic is dependent on what you use to make your holes. Um, the most important thing with making holes in your plastic or cardboard if you're using that although that will get soggy um, is to make the holes even and often so you don't want to skip this bit because the water needs to evenly make all the soil damp um, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that as well so it might not be the best tool what I use is pencil, very sharp pencil, and I've broken a lot of um, pencils, but that's how I do it. And with a, this is two pints of milk, I would personally make one, two, three, four, five, six, six holes, small holes. But how big a hole? Well, Again, your adult will have to help you with this. Just pushing it in. It's very simple. Push it in, make a hole. Push it in, make a hole. Push it in, make a hole. Also, don't forget to pause the video. If you just needed to run and wash loads of recycling, pause the video, do that, come back. Sorry, I, I didn't tell you that before. This is totally unscripted. Make a hole, four holes in not much time. And you want them to be relatively nice sized holes. So we're talking like five millimeter, you know, by far. No, that's too big. Let's say about three millimeter by three millimeter. The, the thing that I've learned in the past from doing this is if I make one hole here, the water is... Okay, so this is the bottom, and when you start seed, you water from the bottom, and it soaks up all the soil. Um, all the, the soil soaks up the water to the top, right? So if I had one, two, three, four holes like this, and the water went up, it wouldn't go up in the centre, which is most probably where the seeds are going to be. So it needs to be even so that it comes up and 
what was the whole thing? I mean, it's not the end of the world if it's not entirely damp, you know, but you just want to make sure your seeds are damp because they need that water. They need to be damp for quite a while at first to kind of, because they're dry, get undry and soak up the water and have the sun and want to start to grow from that point. So, with two pints, I would do that. And so with one that's bigger, I would probably want to do, I mean, I could do six, but I might do eight. So, ah, here we go. Here's a nice example of something that will work together. What did this have in it? Ah, oh, this had some fruit, which is nice. Um, and this is milk. So that works perfectly. Okay. Okay, so this one, I made loads of holes. Can you have too many holes? Not sure. But I don't think so. And we've got loads of holes. Areas you can see here, they might have a bit of a problem, but I've put, definitely put some in the corners, which is very important, central, which is important, and around those areas. So fingers crossed, I could make more holes. I might do, I'm not sure. Just to let you know the pencil situation, so you might want to use something that's pointy and not a pencil, but, you know, you use what you've got. So, there's pencil. I broke the lead. This pencil I'm now using. And as you can see, it's slightly damaged. Because after I make the initial hole, I go back and I push it right in, so that it's right there, um, right up to the colourful bit. And this makes that nice hole size I was telling you about. This is now another thing to plant in. What are we going to call them? <laughs> we'll think about that later. Um, so this plastic is really it's really hard. So what I'm going to suggest to you is to put one of your softer plastics in here. When you come to take your seeds out as well, it'd be really easy. Like, is this, I mean, you can, you can use this, but I think you'd need something a lot harder to make a hole. So for the purposes of this video, <laughs> I'm going to suggest you use it as a tray. Okay. Um, this one, it has like, you know, I think it was sort of maybe sausages. Um, it has a little bit of plastic in the middle. Oh, that's annoying. But it doesn't matter because we can put our smaller ones in there. And it fits perfectly. It's great. <laughs> um, I have some of these. Some of them are broken. And one of them isn't. I'm just going to cut it off. There's no way I would throw away anything at this time of year that can be used for seeds because it's this is just a bit of plastic with holes in. Um, it takes just a little bit of time to recycle, but you use what you've got. If you've got lots of cells, that's great as well. So you have a little home for these guys. Now you'll be glad that you washed them at this point because your hands in there, everything's getting dirty. Obviously be incredibly careful that you're not poking the pencil into your fingers. This is why not, you should force, forcibly, not forcibly, this is why you should ask an adult to help. Do not do this if you're a child on your own. And then... Once you get the hand of hand of uh, hand of once you get <laughs> once you get an idea of seed growing and things like that, you can just call yourself a gardener. Do it now. Call yourself a gardener, and you'll be able to grow so much stuff.
all the time. It's really great to see your seeds come through. It's just so nice. It's such a nice feeling. Um, and soil apparently has lots of nice happy chemicals in it for people who have problems when they're feeling a bit down in the, in the dumps. Now when your harder plastic is here, you're going to have to go back in and really make sure there's a hole here. Because I know you'll be tempted to just leave them. And it's just a little bit harder like this. But you've got to persevere through this time. And because the outcome is, is worth it. It's more work, but it's worth it. Because you will be upset if you see the water not reaching the whole lot. You will be like, you know, why, why didn't Helen make this a very important point? Why did she just skim over it like it was nothing? Why? Yay! Okay, so you don't even have to grow that much. You could grow one thing this year and you will suddenly be a gardener. That's how it works. And then you'll be like, oh, this is, like, everyone should know how easy this is. I'm going to teach everyone. And people will be really happy. <laughs> right. I've got some, it, the water needs to not fight to go in these holes. So I'm going back in. Going back in. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, some good holes. Right. There's going to be some dips and why is it so, if I cover the light a bit here, there's going to be dips in your plastic like so, the water might not, if you have it flat, water might not get in there but depending on how far you fill the water, recycling you're just going to have to see how it goes. Remember as well, the, the width of your windowsill, this will be fine. Right. I've got a little collection. Let's see what we can do. Oh, I can't write it. Oh, you can't really see it. It's a lovely view of Stone House. Actually, let me see if we can. Lovely view. Um, here we have the window. I'm just going to see if it's all going to fit. Well, I was really lucky that was. This is only one window still, but I've managed to guess exactly and how. Now, you might want to check before so that you don't do loads of recycling and you've got no space and you're just uh, overwhelmed. A slightly fun thing that you, I learned that you can do with this is uh, to make your own little spade. Now, this is good for kids because it's not going to be metal, but... Don't forget the sharp edges. If you want, cover it, cover it with um, tape, some sort of, what's it called? What's that black tape called? The black tape. Cover your edges. Keep real. Right, so you take this side with the handle, okay? And I don't have a black marker because I don't. But I'm going to try and make this... Simple, simple. Right, okay. So you've got your side there. This bit is going to be the bottom of your spade. So like, you would, you want to give it a bit of room there. Go over the top at this point. So you cut there, that side, and you cut this side, same. And then you cut across in that space there 
it and meet the other line, the other side. Now I don't know about you, but <laughs> the handle, it's really up to you how long you want your handle. I'm going to make mine really long. So, cut it off. Now, this is the bit that you've got left and you can, you can recycle that if you like. And this is the other bit, so now you can turn it around. You've got like a little a spade. So, I'm just going to smooth it off a little bit up here. And you can keep it just like that if you want. If you want to keep it simple. And, you know, you've got a little spade. And you can use that to move your soil, which actually might be useful in this situation. What I like to do with my spade, which you don't have to do, is kind of make it look a little bit more like a spade. So I kind of cut this bit here, usually, in a triangle up to the top. So it's got a bit of an angle. And then I'll do the same on the other side. Do pause the video if you need to. And yeah, that's just to make it a little, more, a little bit more spadey. Also, um, have you noticed with spades they've got like the pointy bit? So that's just science. Oh, I moved everything over there so that you wouldn't see it. Please, please forgive the mess. Right, so you have this, and with spades you have the pointy bit. And that is you know, science, it's put the pointier, the more pressure, the easier it is to go into the soil. You probably won't have this problem. Um, but if you want to, you can cut that bit there. See? And the same the other side. And you can kind of shape it so it has a point there. And to be honest, I do this because it looks super cute. So this is the little spade. Now, if you are a kid and you're proud of your spade, of which you should be, and your parent helped you, you could turn it into a spade necklace. You just need to put some holes in, a little bit of string. Be careful around your neck area. Make sure it's down here. And then you have your spade on you all the time. And, I mean, you could use it for all sorts of things, not just soil. You could use it to clean up a little bit, a bit of mess. Any sort of mess. It's very exciting. Here is it. Super cute. And we will move on to the next step. Don't forget, during this time... Turn that down a bit. That I am taking my time to do this I am taking breaks and I am dancing and just enjoying my day whilst I do this so you do not have to do this all in one go and I'll probably do my other windowsill tomorrow so it's time to dance with some music <laughs> flooring or to do it in your garden would be the best option because you're going to have lots of soil everywhere and lots of mess um, 
and you won't be able to avoid this however much you try. So, let's begin. I have this, which is peat pre multi compost, multi, -pur multi purpose compost, which is for seedlings. Um, and lots of different things because it's multi-purpose. It'll say on the back that you can take sowing seeds, cuttings, potting and repotting house plants. <coughs> Peat free is best if you can get it. Now if you don't have this you can use your soil in your garden or if your mum or dad or an adult in your family is going to the shop because they need to get some food they can maybe pick up a bag whilst there if they can um, and they might not be able to um, and this was 99p from Lidl other supermarkets are available very cheap plenty of soil for what I'm doing um, and yeah, if you want to stretch your soil, a handy tip is, if you do have a garden, take some of that soil, make sure to remove all the wood and stones because little seedlings, their roots can't battle the wood and stones, they need freedom from all of that. But it's not very nutritious, mix some of this with it and that will get some of the nutrients in the soil and it will stretch it, it will last and you can do lots. So that's the soil. Um, soil is really important. It has the nutrients in it that plants need to grow. Um, there's so much to say about soil. The other really cool thing about soil is you can make it yourself. Did you know that? You can make it from your vegetable scraps and cardboard you've got in the recycling. You have to have a mix of green and brown, but I can do a video about compost if you're interested but it is literal magic real magic you can make soil which is what makes everything grow out of rubbish and you can do it at home but you just need to know a few things like this you know and learn as you go make mistakes so we've got a soil and i've got paper here now wherever you do it you might want to put paper because you're going to drop soil and you don't want to lose that soil because it's precious you know you paid 99p for that soil or you dug it up that's labor so you want to keep your soil so you can put it like this put it back into the bag okay <laughs> adult please get an adult to help you. So what I like to do is just cut the top off if you want. That's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to talk you through my first cell. So here we are. Here we go. I'm going to take it out of the water container, put it on there. And if you don't want to get dirty hands or you want to give this a go, give it a go. Why not? Now this soil is really dark. Really, really dark and kind of moist looking and that is a sign of good healthy soil. I'm not going to use this actually because I need to feel it with my hands to make sure there's no big bits in it. If there's any big bits in it, I'll take them out. So, for example, this bit of wood. I do find that with little, in fact it is cheap soil, that you do sometimes get these bigger bits in it. Um, and it's cheaper, but you might have to spend a little bit of time going through the soil, making sure that it's, you break it up so it's not in big lumps, so that it's all free for the roots to go through, and to take out, you know, little bits of, of wood that you might come across, make sure you're going through all that and just filling it up. So you're basically making like a bed, like a bed for your seeds now. And it's quite a 
quite fun because it's a bit messy. Already I'm making a mess. I told you it's messy. If you don't have all of this at home, you can do it over the bag, like this, over the bag, outside. Um, that will help a lot. But you're not going to avoid making a mess. It's, it's unavoidable, but you can do things to help yourself. Um, I have to be honest, I've become a little bit obsessed with soil, um, which is not something I thought I would ever say. Um, but it is so interesting, it's so just mind-blowing when you start thinking about it and about how it works and um, how it makes everything grow, you know, everything you buy in the supermarket that you eat has some relationship with soil um, and really all plants and all living beings have that kind of relationship. They all look after each other and they all rely on each other and I just found a stone. So as you're doing this you want to tap it firmly down because you don't want any air pockets, right? You're taking that soil apart very lumpy soil. Um, and we're getting rid of those air pockets because if a little if a little root hits an air pocket, it does it's gonna be stuck in the air pocket and it might kill the plant off and all your hard work. So you're preparing, you're trying to avoid it, it might still happen. But you tap it and tap, get rid of those air pockets. And you'll find that your soil goes down. So you put some more soil in. So you always use a lot more soil than you expect. Um, I always use more soil than I expect. I'm always surprised at how much soil I use for these little things. And for pots and things like that. That's why it's quite good to mix it with like garden soil. Top tip. Right. The other thing to keep in mind is... That. You want the soil to come right, right close to the top. So I just put some more. Do this down. Push it down a little bit. Ooh. Make sure your soil doesn't fall over. Uh, tap it down a little bit. Yeah, this is where I want it. Um, you can see that I've put the soil very close to the top there. A mistake sometimes people make is to only, with containers, not fill it up to the right point. And the problem with that is that you get what we call leggy plants. And that means that your plant has shot up. So you might think, oh, my plant has shot up. That's great. But actually what it's trying to do is reach for the sun. So this little curve here is creating too much shade for your plant. And is like trying to get the sun. I need the food. Um, and so... That's why you have those lines on pots that you buy and things like that. That's actually a sign of where you should fill the soil to, unlike plant pots. So you want it right up to the top. So you're going to use a fair bit of soil. Now, I'm just going to make sure the corners are filled in because that was a little bit. There we go. All right, so we have one pot just filled. And I'm going to put that in my watering pot and put that to the side. The watering pot, remember, has no holes in the bottom. Okay? Do not go out just to buy soil. It is not um, necessary. Okay? Get it if you're out anyway doing a necessary shop. Firm it down gently. Make sure everything is in reachable distance. You can also, with some seeds, a lot of seeds, most seeds, you can just plant straight into the ground outside. 
but because of things like weather and the fact that you can't keep an eye on them um, as closely as your window, um, they can be uh, more at risk of not growing. So, so it's very windy outside the spot that you put it. The plant, as it grows, will have to fight against the wind. And when it's growing, it's very little and weak. So it will find that more difficult. But obviously plants grow outside despite this all the time. And so shouldn't be a problem. You can use this technique. <laughs> So that's the last one for this window sill. Right, okay. This is why you don't do it on a carpet, because I've got some on the carpet and it's gonna so I only hoovered yesterday. So keeping the good soil. Yeah. Yeah. You see? I pour it in. I just use some big paper that I have. You can use newspaper, cardboard, keep it. You might need that if I do a composting video. Or you could do some artwork on it now and have a bit of fun. Okay, I'm going to clean this little mess up and my hands and be back. I also forgot to say, tie up your soil, look at my terrible slippers, these are in everyone's house, they use for bread, we all keep them, now's the time to use them, just tie it up, you don't have to do the tie bit, just make sure it's like twisted, maybe put something on top of it so it doesn't dry out. One thing that you'll thank me for in the end is labelling your plants. Now I am using cardboard because that's all I've got. Uh, cardboard will get soggy. So you might want to put a sticker on it or something like that but something that says the name of the plant because you will and I guarantee you you will forget. So Busy. This is the best bit. Okay, so all my mulch two fell out. Okay, fine. We know. Um, but you don't want to use all the seeds anyway, because it's a waste of seeds. Time. You probably end up killing them, putting them somewhere. But you do want to grow a few more than you would, because some seeds germinate and some seeds don't sometimes. So. It's good to be on the cautious side, but not use all your seeds. No, 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 no. So, what are we going to do? I'm going to go through my seeds and see which ones need planting. And I'm going to guess this one does, because it doesn't say. I could look it up. <laughs> this is also out of date, so they might not grow because of that. But to be on the safe side, I'm probably going to plant four, which is... A good number, I think. So I would probably actually maybe I should plant there because it's difficult, isn't it? Now all plants need these ones can be planted outside, it says, and I think they are quite hardy, so you can. Um, and these ones have a certain depth. 3.5 centimetres. I might think about these a bit longer actually. Let's move on to the ones I definitely will definitely eat. But I'm, what will happen is I'll grow certain things today and then tomorrow I'll do this all over again. But I won't record it, don't worry. Um, all you have to do is watch this again and you can plant whatever. I'm just show, showing you my process. So it gives you an idea. So I'm going to grow lettuce. This doesn't have any instructions, 
but this that's um, and it says to plant February, March, April, May, June, July. So this could be a very good succession plant because I could plant it one month, next month, month after that, which is good. And it's very easy to grow salad, lettuce and salad, salad generally. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, because I want, they're gonna take about this much space but they don't mind being in the shade a bit. So I'm going to be able to put them on a different space to the windowsill. So I can I can grow a fair bit in my mind. I don't want to go crazy. So I'm going to experiment with this. My mum's. And it says to grow one centimetre deep. So we're going to practice what I preached today. I'm going to cut it open and we're going to get some sellotape ready to shut it. And we're going to have a look at one. Okay, this is interesting. Thanks, Mum. Okay, so these seeds, you can't... Look at that, it's so small. And I'm just going to move you da down, down and down and across. There we go. So one centimetre... It's only, well, so you put your finger in the middle, about a centimetre. Right, so we're putting our finger in a centimetre. And then wiggle it about. Now you take your little seed. Now I've got a few husks here, so I'm just going to be careful. So take my seed. And I pop it in the hole, and then I take another seed, and I pop it in the hole, and another one. Okay, so I only want to grow three of my mum's lettuce. Sell tape it up straight away. <laughs> this is just good practice. If you don't have cellar tape and you want to be a bit more eco-friendly, you can fold them in certain ways. This is why I avoid it. But I'm just gonna go with what's what's good right now. And that's fine. So we got that. So the lettuce, I'm gonna put it somewhere where I know it's done, which is here. And then from Tamar Organics, which is a cool place here in the southwest, we are going to. Oh, they are different looking. Okay, so I hope they do generally do the same thing. This is about the right time of year to plant, to be honest, for a lot of things. So these ones look like this. And this is um, Lettuce Maravilla de Vern Veranum. So that's a specific type of lettuce, which is an Italian variety. Crispy green leaves with a red tinge and great taste. And good bolt resistance. So bolting is the same as leggy, I think. And you don't want them to bolt either, be leggy. Right, so what we're gonna do is put these ones on the other side. So I have my lettuce. Um, and put them back straight away. Good thing about lettuce as well is that it likes to be harvested. So the more you harvest it, the happier it is and the more it grows. A lot like herbs, a lot of herbs like that, where you, you harvest it and uh, it likes it, it grows more. Um, and that's handy if you want salad and something to eat. And also just like to have your friends around and be like, oh, I made some salad. Would you like it? I grew it from seed. I watched Helen's video, Helen Moore's video. Gardener in residence, maybe that will be my name. I'm still working on it. Got it. Overdone. Be mindful where you're putting stuff because you get confused. Easily done. Cardboard. This has got some nice bits that side. So what I'll do is before I do that, I'm just going to move the soil that I moved out of the way over the top really gently and 
just cover it. Cover it gently. It's one centimeter in. It needs that soil, it needs that moisture, it needs that sun. You tap it very gently, very gently. Okay? Now to remember this, we're going to have to cut ourselves a label. We'll write it first. So we've got lettuce. L-E-T-T-U-C-E -E. um, from my mum which is mixed so here um, I'll show you in a minute okay this is what I'm doing this. Um, and then at the top I will also put the date today which I don't know it's the 23rd of the 3rd so to put 20 Third of the third. There we go. Twenty third of the third. And then what you can do is cut it like this. And if you want to make it look like the ones you buy, then you can just cut this top bit into a triangle, which will make it easier to put in here. And then you have lettuce and uh, that's just the beginning of this process it's important to know when you planted it so you can work out the germination time so you get you start to learn more by writing it all down so you can suddenly say to someone oh um, radish yes it has a three to five day germination time and people will be like wow how did you know that and you just have to tell them that you're a genius or something. Um, okay. So for me, the ones that I really want to plant, I'm just I really want to do feed tree. Yay! Okay. So we've got March, April, May, June, July, half of July. Two centimetres with thirty centimetres between the rows. One. I think I might need some more space but I could try and germinate it and then move it to a bigger space but vegetables don't like to be moved that much. The most popular beetroot amongst British gardeners. Mm. I'm going to try it out. We can only make mistakes and mistakes are how we learn. Right, so I'm going to take this one. We're going to put two in here. This is a two pint of milk and I just want it to have that good balance of growth and space. So I'm just going to make it about two centimetres because they said two centimetres there. And I might have two beetroots, which, is <laughs> which isn't a lot. I'm going to take a chance. Right, so put two centimetres there, two centimetres there, I've got hair on my arm. And we're going to use these and pop them in to the hole. I'm going to sell it up. Because I haven't done that. Put it in my to done, done pail. Cover it up with some of the soil. Tamp it down, tamp it down, tamp it down. Doop, 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 doop. Right. And I'm going to write. Wait a minute. I need to write the info first. Right. There we go, Janice. Do me good, Janice. You're going to do well, Janice. Right. Right, let's get some more going. I'm really excited to do cucumbers again this year because I was so surprised at how easy they were um, and I'm really excited so one centimetre as well a lot of things generally are going to be one centimetre and it says it takes about 6 to 15 days to germinate it's an outdoor hybrid so I'm going to have to move it outdoor I had this like idea this year that I'd grow cucumbers around my window but <laughs> They quite like a cool germination cucumbers 
Um, I didn't know that. Learning as you go. Okay, well, we're going to... I don't need lots of cucumbers, but I know that some might not work. And also, if I have extra ones, I can give them to friends. So, I'm going to put... And they're going to have to be taken out quite quickly, though, that's the only thing. Okay, I've got a better idea. Grow lots and give them to my friends as presents during this time, which I think I will do. Okay, right, we're going for it. One centimetre, one centimetre, one centimetre, one centimetre, one centimetre, one centimetre. Obviously, I would leave these outside their house so they can come out again. One, two, three, four. This one doesn't look very good, this seed. Looks like it's been squished. I won't use that one. Six cucumbers, what on earth? This is the life. Right, and cover that up with the soil. And tamp it down, you tamp it, tamp it, tamp it. And when things get a bit less confusing and at the end of everything, you might have lots of plants that you can take outside. And give to friends or put in the garden cucumber done and that's all my cucumber seeds so I'm gonna have to work out I'm gonna have to learn how to harvest the seeds from the cucumber this year because I can't miss out okay so where did I put my cucumbers my cucumber right down cut it down make a little triangly and um, pointy bit cucumber Put that up in my wind seal. My window seal. Okay. <laughs> now, one of the things I'll definitely be mm, love it is wild rocket. May, June, July. Oh, do you know it's not time to plant this yet? So we put that back on the back burner. We either put it in a new pile or I put it in a new pile? I'm going to put it in a new pile. This might help me actually. So this would be my... These are broken, so I can't use them. But I can put my plant later in the year seeds in here. And when I look at it, I can remember to plant them later in the year instead of putting them all in the seed box, which will really confuse me. So we'll put that there. To the side. Curly kale. That's later in the year. Put that in there. Onions. So indoors, March, beginning of March, it says. I haven't grown onions before, so I kind of want to have a go. Um, thinly, where they are to crop. Yeah, I'm going to put these outside. Directly into. Okay. Onions are directly into the soil, so that's going to have to go into. <laughs> But directly into the soil pile. I don't know. I'll put it in my later in the it's not later in the year though, so I need a new pile of directly into the soil pile. Okay, let's do the radishes. The radishes you can sow from March to September. What did I say about radishes radishes? What did I tell you? Here they are. They look a little bit like the seeds, but obviously bigger. Oh, I wish I had more. See, this is what happens. You hope you, you want more soil. Okay, I'll do the rest another time. If you want, if you like it that I'm going through it this in depth, then let me know and I'll carry on doing my planting on camera. Otherwise, I can just do it in the privacy and not annoy everyone, hopefully. Um, okay, yes. Famous and popular. I can see why. Two centimetres deep. Okay, so one, two centimetres is, we can see that's common. Um, and how far apart? 15 centimetres. Well, 
Oh, that's not enough soil, but I can start them indoors and try, can't I? Can't I? With the beetroot I planted before, didn't I? I do remember last year actually that indoors was harder. I might sow the radish. I'm going to sow it because they're hardy as well. And, you know, what I will do is sellotape that because it's, I don't want to lose any radishes. Okay. This is going into my straight out in the soil pile in the open. See this ro rocket is saying something different, but it is a different type of rocket. That's wild rocket. The wild stuff is going to be hardier, isn't it? I'm assuming. There you go. Just realised you might not be able to see anything. Okay. So thin. Space. Yeah, you can grow these things indoors. Okay. But they might be hardier then because you're moving them. I don't know. We're going to put four. And we're going to do it... Um, about a centimetre. Four centimetre. Tiny little seeds, these ones. One, two, three, four. Cover that. One pile. Cover. In your soil. 23rd and forward. Rocket or recover. Right. I have two more right now. Okay, courgette. My big seeds. I'm just going to take two. And put, I know they come up quite big as well at the beginning, as you can sort of see from the seeds, can't you? I guess I'm going to put it about a centimeter and a half, or guess it, push it in, and then cover it up. And take it in, take it in. And we will need to keep the info and what seeds we have used for later, because they have information on them for later on as well. So, this is today's crazy attempt at planting. Done. But, we are not done. Oh no. No, we are not done. Now your plants need watering. Hey, 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 hey. So, milk bottles already we have used them to make little planters we've used them to make little shovels and now we're going to use it to water the plants now this is an important part with seeds and most plants you do not pour water onto the soil this is because of the force of the soil coming, the water coming onto your soil. So it might move the seeds and maybe move them to the top where they're not covered in soil um, and displace things so they're growing too close together and we want things to stay close together. And this is why the holes at the bottom are important. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill up our little container Make sure it's full to about a centimetre or so, covering all the holes. And we're just going to leave our planter and the soil to soak up all that water right to the top. And you'll see it getting damp to the top. And you can just touch it lightly, tap it, and you'll feel it's damp. And that's when the soil's had all the water it needs. Um, and after that point, you can empty your water out of this bit. You just want to check back in about three minutes. So we're going to do that now. You know, I forgot how long it takes for the water to go up. So I've left it about 10 minutes and I think it'll be a couple of minutes more before <clears throat> it's damp. One of them's a little bit damp. What I'll do is I'll empty the water when it's fully damp and use that water on my other plants that I have because I don't want to waste it. Um, 
and that was the beginning uh, there's a lot more to say about all sorts of things that you can do now with your seedlings um, and yeah let me know if you want me to go through some more plants and seeds or if you would like some tips on how to grow them indoors more um, yeah all that sort of stuff I'll probably show videos at different times if there's anything you're particularly interested let me know don't forget this is a long video for beginners um, there's a lot to get through um, I hope it was entertaining enjoyable um, and know that you don't have to do it all in one day you could do just one in one day as long as you like check the back of the packet and make sure you're doing it in the the time um, and yeah so this is a interesting little thing to do isn't it so i'm showing my seats now what i might do is take the cardboard bits out of the soil because i know the water will it will also soak up the water um and possibly ruin the ink so i won't be able to read it which would be a shame so I might take them out and just sellotape them to the plastic, probably the water bit um, or the pot, and uh, that way it won't get wet. You just have to use your ingenuity, imagination, creativity, make some mistakes, um, work together. Um, yeah, so I hope this was entertaining during this time. Um, it is a... Uh, interesting time it's different um, and we're collectively adjusting ourselves to the change at the moment um, and I was thinking about other animals that work together for a collective end goal so I was thinking about ants you've probably seen ants and bees you've probably seen bees um, and ants they all work together to make their colony um, and that colony protects everyone um, and bees make hives and create lots of honey from the hives together and protect each other that way um, and continue on for generations and humans are like that too we build hospitals and everyone works together in the hospital so that we can um, help those who are ill and humans work in that way we build buildings and we interact and we shop and we always work together just like nature does and at this time it's really important for us all to work together um, and to wash our hands cough into our elbow follow the directions the the government is telling us at the moment stay inside as much as you can don't overbuy so that we can share out the food amongst us and when you're feeling a little anxious and worried about what's going on talk to a friend talk to your parents talk to anyone who will listen <laughs> and um, know that that feeling will pass and we're all feeling like that sometimes um, and we have to work together just like the ants and bees sometimes you might see a stray ant um, wiggling off on its own and doing its own thing and although it's not the best thing for the colony there will be some stray ants don't let that put you off staying in the colony and working together because they're working together to protect each other so we all have to work together and think of each other and think of those who are more sick than us and how we can protect them by following these guidelines and i hope that you can maybe take up a bit of gardening, might take your mind off things and 
remember that the seeds will grow they will come and later on in the year you can enjoy watching them sprout up and we can share together what we're doing okay have a lovely day and i'll see you soon